Hey guys, Sneaky Kitty Game Dev here, and in this video, I want to go ahead and set it up so when the claymore goes off, it gets destroyed, and we want to trigger basically a function that is going to perform our event for the explosion, the effects, you know, that kind of stuff. So the way we're going to go about this is basically when this claymore gets destroyed, so when we overlap, we're going to go ahead and destroy it. We want to as well perform our like our Niagara effect of an explosion. Same thing goes for we want to do our sound. So the way we can do that is by overriding a function called destroyed. So if we head over to our claymore, I'll just do a below uh, begin play. If we search for destroy, you will see we have a function called destroyed that we can override. Let's go ahead and generate the definition. And we want to make sure we call super, but as you can see, destroyed will also, well, it also fires the blueprint function. We want to run it before that. So what we're going to do is basically run, actually I don't really know if it technically matters as to where we go. If we do it before or after, I think it'll still fire. But to be on the safe side, I want to run it before it actually calls the parent of this. So let's go ahead and print out a string here. And we're going to do claymore destroyed. And that's what we want to print. Now because this is going to involve replication, remember, we currently are not actually replicating our claymore. It is server owned because we have it placed out in the world like so. We want to make sure that when the server destroys it, the client re receives the destroy, which will also cause this to fire. If it is not replicated, the server will destroy the claymore, but the client won't see it. Like, well, the client will still see the claymore there. It won't be destroyed on the client. So to do that, we want to make sure we set the replicates to equal true in our constructor. So once we have that, we can go ahead and run our live coding. And I'm a little curious if it updates the property or maybe not. Okay, let's check it again. So go back to our Claymore, replicates, that's set to true. Now when we walk past it, it should fire. I can grab that corner. So I walk past, client and server say destroyed. So it's gone on the server and it's gone on the client. So let's go ahead and double check. We're going to go ahead and run into it on the, the uh, server like so. And everything is good to go. So that's where we want to trigger our, basically our Niagara effect. So to do so, we need to also create a Niagara effect. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, go to effects, and we're going to create a Niagara emitter. Or actually in this case we can just do a Niagara system. That'll probably be easier. So create a emitter. We're just going to do, uh, hmm, I guess a directional burst would probably be the better option. Keep in mind, I am extremely new to Niagara. So I'm going to call this Niagara system underscore Claymore. All right, and uh, yeah, I'm basically going to leave it as that. So that'll be our effect. Nice and beautiful. So I place it here, and there should be a button to... Oh, these are world settings. Yep. So if I swap that, that should be our effect. Okay, so we want to set this in our Claymore so that it goes Boom, boom. So the way we can do that is set up a property for it. So we have our edit defaults only. Let's add, those are for our components. Let's add one for the Niagara system. So U, Niagara, Niagara system. Let's call it explosion. And we want to make sure we forward declare this as well as we have to do something else as well. So class, U, Niagara system. Now we have to head over to our build.cs, scroll on over. So at the very end, past Claymore module, we want to make sure we include Niagara. And that should take care of that, I hope. Let's see, must be a U class. Is it called something else? Maybe an include will tell us. Niagara.
I'm not entirely sure. Let me do a little bit of research. All right. Well, it compiles. I guess this is just one of those annoying IntelliSense issues, but I'm not too concerned about it because it states it's an Unreal header tool error, not a uh, not a compiler one. So, anyways, we have that included down at the very end. If I can even scroll to the end of our build.cs, so we're good to go. So now what we want to do is we want to spawn the Niagara system. So that's off the Niagara system functions library. So let's go ahead and include Niagara function library. And in the destroyed, here we want to perform the spawning of it. So yeah, of course now it fixes itself. So we want to check if explosion is set. So if explosion, we want to spawn the explosion. So you Niagara function library spawn system at location and we're basically just going to spawn it at our claymore's location so i would imagine our rotation should be good but yeah if it's not it's not too big of a deal but anyways pass in our world pass in our look or er, our niagara system so explosion and we want to pass in our location so get actor location then our rotation, so get actor rotation. Then we have our scale, which is one, auto destroy true, auto activate true. Uh, don't need a pulling method because we're just doing it once. And that is all. So that should really be all of the, uh, really all of what we need. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay. Let's go ahead and open up our blueprint and set our explosion. So that's going to be our claymore. So now we really don't need to keep testing with two players, but I'll do it really quick. When we run in front of it, as you can see, we had our little explosion. So I'm going to continue this by playing in the viewport because it's a lot easier to see. So when I cross, it goes boom, and we ragdoll. And as you can see, everything there, it was replicated. So for the most part, that's going to wrap this up. The only thing else that there would be is you might want to do some form of team check or something like that. Now, the way you can kind of, actually I'll be doing that in another video. The way you can kind of handle this is because remember, modules are supposed to be independent from you know anything else. It's, you're supposed to really contain it. So what we can do is on our overlap begin, we can set up a virtual function that will have various conditions in it that will return true or false. Now we can set those as our kind of like our defaults. And then what we can do after that is because it's a virtual function, let's say in our actual game, we may want to override a claymore or make a cloud child class that inherits from it. And we may want to override that function check to do something like check for team. So that way the claymore doesn't explode for everybody. And what we can do is override that function, check and by calling super. So kind of like how super works here and here because it calls the parent function. And if that returns true, then we can continue. And when we continue, we do a check and we compare the teams. So is the actor that, you know, we ran that ran in front of the claymore part of team X? If it is, maybe don't explode. But if it's a part of team Y, then explode. So that kind of stuff. And it would all be kind of controlled by a single Boolean. So that's something we'll consider setting up. Well, I guess actually we can set it up in the next video just to kind of give you a, another view of modules. But for the most part, we are basically done. The only thing I want to do in the next video is change out our collision, which is this box overlap with a custom one, and that's gonna be all. So, if you like what I'm doing and you wanna help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series and a couple others. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop in my Discord, and I'll try to help you out.